Hello and welcome. Um, hello, welcome. Penelope Young, it's 5.30 um, p.m. today. Sorry, I missed the 4.30 slot. Uh, I was in transit. I have a conference down in Anaheim with the Emoja group um, through, through Bakersfield. So it's my other Bakersfield College class. And um, uh, sorry, just I wasn't sure if I was going to make it tonight, and I did not make it for your Zoom. All right, I want to talk about our um, writing center. Let me get over here and start from the week overview and then get into our writing center step four for the midterm. Um, we are in week 11. I know it sounds like kind of crazy, but we are all the way up to step four here with the writing center draft revision. Um, this week is also the 20th century. Uh, we did some early modern art. Now we're getting into the later uh, modern art and some other um, styles around the world of the 20th century. Okay, so let's look at our breakdown on points. Um, you have a quiz for um, 15 points. You have the Catalina Delgado trunk discussion and you have the research um, writing assignment. Step four is the draft. So 65 points this week, um, and we'll get into a couple more things if there's time, but I just want to focus on step four, and I'm going to backtrack then to the other steps just to give one more overview for you guys. Um, the previous Zooms, now this is going to be a, a YouTube, but the other Zoom meetings we've had the last few weeks have pretty much been focused on this Writing Center assignment. So please go back if there's some information that I'm missing here today. Um, please go back and look at those. I am traveling. I'm not super focused today. So um, hopefully I'll get all the details here. All right. So at this point, you have submitted your outline and you have um, worked on your resources, your citations. So you have a sense of, of this paper in process, and now you're going to submit a, um, a draft for revision. You're going to uh, have a writing center um, appointment, and then you're going to give them um, your, your, it may not be your final draft. The thing is, writers, when you talk about writing, often have six or seven drafts before they finish something. I know that we're not all professional writers and we're not professional researchers, but you should have uh, multiple versions of this writing um, by this point in time because it's going to be due a week from tomorrow on November 10th. So here we are, November 2nd, November 3rd, tomorrow is our due date on the Thursday. Then for this piece, for step, step four, step five is the, the midterm. And that's the only part of the midterm you'll have is just this essay. If you didn't do steps one through four, you're going to get penalized because um, you really meant to have a thoughtful research paper once you turn in the midterm. So I will say, I'm going to address this a little bit, is that this concept, this way of doing things kind of backfired. Um, instead of getting students more engaged, I feel like a lot of students dropped um, with the drop date being last Friday on the 28th. Um, I saw a ton of drops instead. So that's kind of disappointing. Um, I don't know that I would do this the same way again, um, but uh, I was hoping that you guys, because you're required to do all these steps, would get more engaged instead of less engaged. We have a visitor, sorry, that's Heidi, my friend's dog, so I'm staying at my friend's house to go to the conference uh, down in Orange County. Okay, so overall, uh, I'm gonna back up to the announcement. I listed all the steps here, um, every single one of them, one through four, or sorry, one through five here, and then this overall resource page. I think a lot of students skip the resource page. This is also replicated in step five but I'm going to put it in this week also. I think I'm going to enter this in this week so it's a duplicate. Don't think it's an extra thing you have to do, but this resource page is important because um, it has everything in it all in one. 
Um, it's got the links to the library, the libguides, it's got the um, writing center, and so on. Okay, so it's got the MLA guides. This is uh, Al Purdue, um, uh, Purdue's college, but it has their um, ideas on how to do the MLA style. Uh, you can do MLA or Chicago. I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't, excuse me, I don't care. Or we used to call ALA, but I don't think ALA is used that much anymore. I don't need to. Okay, sorry. So um, this has got an overview of different writing styles. Remember, you're writing in the third person. Um, the writing center may or may not know that. You might want to remind them that that's what you're asked to do is the third person. Okay, so this has a lot, and there's a highlight right here, a link here. This gives you a bunch of ideas about the formatting or a bunch of the rules. And then as you scroll down, you're going to get into um, these, I think, are going to be somewhat helpful. I don't know if they're going to be super helpful. Uh, plagiarism, and then include your image of your work. So that's more on the instructions. Submission instructions down here. And then here are your subjects to choose. Um, you can do impressionism and think about uh, include the concept of optical mixing. I think that that's easier than you think. Um, I think this is pretty well documented. If, if you, you know, did choose this, dig in a little deeper. The Mexican muralists, some of you guys chose that already. I, there, I saw two or three of these. I saw three or four of those. Um, and again, you can pick other ones that maybe we don't look at the actual mural in our readings in the chapter, but you guys can Google and get into a few more of their murals. Now, Diego Rivera right now um, has a show up, uh, well, he, you know, he's passed away, but he has, at, um, he has a show in San Francisco. Extra points if you guys end up getting out there. Um, SF MoMA, it's down here. So there is an exhibit going on. I don't know the dates because I'm not going to get to be able to go. This is, I'm, I don't know what's going on, maybe because I'm using their Wi Fi. But this exhibit right here with SF MoMA, um, it's probably going to be really amazing. I bet it's well attended. Let me try it one more time. Our commitment to you on now. Oh, here we go. January uh, 2nd, 2023. But I think this is going to be really incredible. Um, 150 of Rivera's paintings, frescoes, and drawings. Highly encourage you guys if you can go and see that. Um, that's going to be really amazing. So anytime you're going to do something like that, if you well, let me put it this way: if you're already going to travel somewhere, that's kind of like what I'm doing now. I knew I was going to be traveling and down in Orange County, so I just saw two amazing Orange County museums: uh, OCMA, O C M A which just opened a few weeks ago, incredible shows. And then this other little museum called the Hilbert uh, near Chapman College um, in Orange, the city of Orange. And I'd never been to either one of those. So that was incredible, absolutely incredible. So if you're planning a trip to San Francisco, I encourage you to go see this. If you're going to just go see this, then I encourage you to see some other things as well and research a little bit. Let me try the link from here, see if it'll go. There we are. I don't know why this is being so finicky. Um, so here is this, the tickets, the artworks, all the paintings. Some of these are going to be studies. I've never seen that before ever. That looks really incredible. Um, some of these will be studies for murals, like this one here. May This one's a mural itself, but you know, you're going to look at some of these pieces. This is part of a mural. Um, that's, I think, a portrait of, um, oh, I thought that was a Frida portrait. Richard. Oh, that's Lu Lupe Marin. Um, so these are different paintings that of his you may have never seen before. So one of the beautiful things that happens when you get to see an exhibition such as this, um, you really get to see more of their story. You get to see a more complete view of the artist. And circling back to our midterm paper, that is what you're trying to do within that work or the concepts that you're covering, okay? So um, we want to think about the resources. You guys have 11 choices here. 
this is the most general one. If you're really stuck and you're not grasping any of the other concepts, number 11, probably be the easier or more general one. The rest of these are specific to times and periods that we covered, not in depth, um, and some of those you might struggle with, but if you go through one through four, um, these are ones that I specifically wrote because of the things that we um, covered in class. So it shouldn't be too bad for you to cover um, those particular ones, okay? So the idea of realism moving into cubism and, and Dadaism, and by that I mean realism, the movement. You're going to see it predates Impressionism. It predates um, abstraction. So realism has to do with the subject matter, not that it's a hyper-realistic painting. It has to do with painting real subjects, real people in the real world. So, um, but it does influence modernism, and so does Impressionism, and so does Romanticism. So you want to look in some of those 19th century art forms and see how they're influencing uh, modernism. So that's that one. Fauvism, Expressionism. These are both, um, and there are more, but these are two, two main early modernist um, uh, isms or schools of thought uh, that use color specifically and color theory. So if you're somebody who really can write about color well, interested in colorful work, colorful painting, so on and so on, then that's a good choice for you. Uh, the Mexican muralists, of course, but just note that I just showed you the Diego Rivera piece. Um, you can get into there and start to get into some of that um, writing and then also choose some of the work in there. There may, or be, there may or may not be, I'm not sure, um, uh, artworks, murals that you have never seen before. So he's got incredible ones. There's some in the U.S., some in Mexico. Um, and I don't know... Um, Beyond that, how many murals have survived and are still what we call extant, still still exist of his work in other places. Um, but that's a good you know thing to start to get into the content and the politics of the time. Remember that Mexico's history is not the same as the U.S.'s. There's all kinds of things happening in the 30s, 40s. Uh, 50s that are not happening here and vice versa. So those two different countries and what's happening um, at that time where, you know, like for instance, we looked at Diego Rivera's um, murals. We didn't cover it, you know, I didn't lecture on it that much, but you were looking at his mural uh, for the Rockefellers in, um, you know, uh, that gets destroyed at Rockefeller Center in, you know, which still exists today. It's, you know, 30 Rock. That's where 30 Rock was formed. Saturday Night Live is there. NBC owns it. So that foyer, that entranceway, he had this big uh, mural and Rock Rockefeller himself had it destroyed because it was too communistic, too socialistic, and had pictures of Lenin and Stalin. And he repaints it in Mexico City. Long story about all that, but you guys can look into that um, and that trying to get Trotsky recognized as a communist and um, that was butting up against the capitalism of the U.S. So a lot of things were happening there. Um, Frida and Diego are very active politically and then the artworks show a lot of politics and also Siqueiros and some others. So that's a good one if you want to get into that one. All right, so let's go back. I'm going to look at our um, our overall view of the, so that has more there and there's information on how to do it here. Um, then on the announcements, all the links are there. If you missed one of the steps, I did put it again in this last announcement. Um, so the steps are all here. So if you missed one, two, three, definitely catch up on those. I think three is now open. Um, you can still, yeah, you can still turn it in this week. Uh, one or two, just email me the certificate for one and then certificate for two and then also the outline for two. I will still give you credit up to this week, but you have got to get it in this week. 
um, the idea here was for you guys to go step by step, do this in a constructive, thorough way, get involved with the writing center, know how to write a better paper. That was my my overall idea here with giving you points to go to the writing center and to do this step by step. I was hoping you guys would develop more of a systematic way to write this these papers. Um, and again, some people really embraced it and it was great. And then other students have not done much at all on this. So it's been, been a bit frustrating. Um, this one for step three, you have three components. Um, you have, uh, and this was technically due last week, um, but I'm going to go ahead and take it this week. Uh, on step one and two, remember, two, a certificate for each, two is going to have an extra outline uh, you download it, fill it in, and upload it. At this point, you're going to have to email one and two. Three is still available to you, so try to get three and four done tonight, tomorrow. Um, and step three, the one that was actually due last week, still can turn it in. This has the Eat Method, method Workshop. I'll show you the Writing Center. Link to that in just a second. Um, your compiled research or quotes here and a rough draft. If you want to combine this, a few students did that, they combined two and three, you can put your research and quotes at the bottom, that's totally fine, but um, of, of number three, but definitely you're going to get a rough draft done. Now I know this sounds like a lot of work, but really we're going for quality of writing, and this is the way that optimally you do start to write in future, um, because the more you write up a draft, let it rest and think about it for a bit and then come back and write another draft and then tweak it and add more to it, cut things out that don't fit and really spend some time wrestling with the writing, the better it's going to be. Um, I know that sounds like a lot asking a lot. And if you haven't been doing this, yeah, it's hard at first, but like anything else, you get used to the pattern and you guys will learn to do this in a more efficient way and it won't take up so much time and you won't have so much anxiety about writing. I mean, that's the point. We're trying to get you guys to um, understand the steps, understand the rules and hopefully reduce the anxiety and then also reach out to the writing center in a timely fashion so that you can use these tools, right? Okay, I might have to close the door again. The dog opened the door. Um, let's see, where are we going? So we're in step three here. Let's go to the writing center. I'm sorry, writing center support. So it's an Im embedded course. So if you're going to do the EAT method, you're going to go to the workshop. You're still going to do a rough draft, but you're also going to do this one. So remember, this was step one. Down here, that is step two, thesis development. There was a little bit of confusing. The wording was kind of confusing. There is an outline that you are submitting after you look at thesis development. So that was two. And then three is going to be here. So I know it's a little bit out of order as to the writing center, but those are the steps, the order that we're doing them. Okay. Then you're going to go through here and um, start down here. And same thing as the other two. You're going to kind of read through and then you have each step you're going to do here. Click next button. You'll have a, a short video and then you'll have a quiz and so on. So upload the certificate as well. This one uh, talks a little bit about um, the sentences that make up the, the EAT method. Um, stands for explain, add, and tell. Remember where the terminology I use or the course that's in the course is a little different. Um, and I ask you to analyze, describe, analyze, and, and um, oh, what's the other one? I'm sorry, I'm blanking. But uh, evidence, I think, is the E. But I want you to give evidence for the idea that you have. You're always giving evidence for it, if that makes sense, okay? Um, but there's some good back and forth here. How does, how does it, how does it explain? So just make sure you understand this. This is going to help you not plagiarize. I don't know. I, I'm a little puzzled how much plagiarism I get every semester. Um, I wonder if some students think that we're just not going to check or it's not going to show up or we're not going to see it. 
but you have to remember, um, for those of you who are thinking about plagiarizing, um, for us teaching these, we teach multiple sections every semester. That's hundreds of students per semester, three times a year. For many years, that means we've probably seen that quote or that plagiarized section, oh, you know, a good hundred plus times. So there's no way that you're going to kind of like, well, you know, granted, I'm tired, I'm traveling right now, you might sneak it past me, but we're using Turnitin software. And then if I didn't catch it and turn it in, it sounds really, really familiar, I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at a couple textbooks and Google myself and say, well, that looks really like the writing of um, another author, or if it starts to suddenly get very technical when you weren't writing in this way previously. I mean, there's a lot of other ways that that um, plagiarism comes into play. It's not just turn it in and the percentage. There's a lot of easy ways that we see it. So just be careful and be mindful of it. But again, you're going to be doing this uh, rough draft, and this is going to be available until uh, tomorrow. So get that done. If you miss this deadline, um, I may consider Monday, but I will. I'll send it. Out, I will send out an email if that is the case. Okay. So that is the Writing Center requirement. Let's get into the um, Catalino. Oh, you know what else? I'm totally forgetting. Is that I'm gonna go to discussions and do it this way. You guys can turn in the Matisse cutouts. This is extended until this week and then Catalina De Delgado trunk is due this week also so even though I gave you guys an extension these two are both um, a little bit involved so it's going to be a lot of work so Catalina Delgado trunk is Papel Picado artist really interesting artist she talks about the codices um, from the Mayan um, and some of the storytelling then on the Matisse cutouts Definitely look through all this. I talked about it kind of fast uh, last week in the Zoom, uh, last recording. Um, but go down here and watch these two videos and then follow the instructions here. It says what's required and then the yeses and nos. So it's organic shapes, 90%. You can have some geometric shapes, but it wants to be organic shapes. It wants to be uh, complementary colors, and it's non-narrative and abstract. If you do really want to do a narrative scene, like a sea scene or um, a landscape, something like that, if you really do want to do that, that's okay, but definitely make sure it hits the other criteria with the organic shapes and um, make sure it's carefully composed and it's, it's cut out nice and cleanly. Don't use a white or black background, okay? And then the link to the papers are up here, but you can get them at um, Dollar Tree, I think, or Family Dollar, um, and then get the 50, not the 200. Sorry, I'm gonna have to close the door. Um, so just get the smaller package of them, and you only need about six to 10 sheets, okay? So that's that one, Catalina Delgado Trunks, pretty straightforward, really interesting artist. So I hope you guys do well and email me with questions. Okay, bye.